you can have a, a true Bigfoot being interviewed on a, on a Conan show, and <laughs> people will say it's a man in a monkey suit. So you can't win with some people. I'm going to start recording this series from my car. I was going to record at the apartment, but I got an important call a few minutes ago. It was a call I've been waiting on for weeks. Let me back up. Something is hiding in the forests of the Pacific Northwest. Something mysterious. Something strange. Something that is possibly dangerous if it's disturbed by mankind. It's also something that doesn't want to be found. The goal is to document my investigation of the elusive creature known as Bigfoot. And I won't stop until it's found. I'm Jared Strong, and I'm hunting Bigfoot. I'm not a zoologist, cryptozoologist, anthropologist, or paleontologist. I'm not interested in studying Sasquatch for the sake of studying him. Studying him. To find him. I know what you're probably thinking. I promise, I've heard it all before. Snide comments. <laughs> yeah, they stopped having an effect on me a long time ago. I am what I am. And I stopped letting the opinions of so-called skeptics affect me. I believe in what I'm doing, and I know I'm on the verge of a conclusive discovery of this elusive species. To finally give the world the evidence it's been begging for. I'm hoping these recordings will supplement evidence I've obtained over the years in satisfying ambiguous requirements for skeptics and non-believers. God knows I've given them enough. Let me be clear, this isn't a hobby. This isn't something to do to pass my weekends, and I'm not looking to get rich off of this pursuit. <laughs> I promise you that. Mm, I hunt Bigfoot, because I need to hunt Bigfoot. These recordings are my way of journalizing this experience, to show others what it takes to track one of the stealthiest creatures God ever contemplated to be as transparent as possible in delivering the evidence required by the community. Some of you are gonna wonder about me, about my sanity. Some of you may even think you already have me figured out, but let me tell you, you don't. You don't have a clue about me, about my motivations, about what has happened to me in my life, none of it. Hopefully this series will show you why I do what I do. You'll understand what drives people like me to keep pushing on when the scientific community hides their duty to study this species behind a curtain of careerism. I'm determined to show you that Bigfoot is real if the evidence is there, which I believe it is. I'm pulling into Falls Terrace, a restaurant next to an abandoned brewery in Tumwater, Washington, a suburb of the state capital. I'm meeting a local zoologist and friend, Peter Beckingham. Peter's one of the few people to be respected by both the local and lower communities, and I'm grateful he's willing to sit down and publicly talk about this. So few established people of science are willing to do what he does and, and has been doing. He's a good guy. Hey, thanks for meeting, Peter. Like I said in my messages, uh, I'd like to record this conversation if you're still okay with that. Oh, I don't mind at all. It's my pleasure. This project of yours, it's, it's interesting. I'm glad you're finally doing it. It's overdue. I sense you're frustrated. Good thing I know you. Or I think you're already jaded. <laughs> Investigating sightings and gathering evidence for the past 20 years has worn me down a little, I concede that. 
Which is why I appreciate your help kicking this off. Not a problem. Honestly, I'm happy to talk to you about this. You know I geek out about Bigfoot. Plus, if I can help with your project by getting good science behind it, then we all win. This concept sounds interesting, and it's needed. There's a story to be told here. Plus, you and I both know this. There aren't enough legitimate influencers talking about Bigfoot in the public forum. That reality creates a vacuum which has been filled by too many fame seekers who end up getting caught in the spotlight. And that's what hurts the legitimacy of this field of study. I'm glad to hear you say that. I really am. Can, uh, can we start by getting your thoughts on why the Pacific Northwest is an area of focus for experts interested in Sasquatch? Geography and climate. Simple as that. The Pacific Northwest has the perfect combination of four and a half million acres of wilderness, rainforests, and a moderate climate that is preferable to this particular species. That's a sticking point for some people who ask, why not colder climates if Sasquatch is, as claimed to be, in that it's a hairy mammal? What's your answer to people who'd have a problem with a fur-covered ape living in a moderate climate? If I bought you the best Arctic gear money could buy, would you still live outside the elements? no matter how moderate they are, or would you spend the winter inside, probably near the fire? <laughs> Seriously, a species like Sasquatch, belonging to the Hominoidea superfamily, evolved for the conditions of their environment. One thing I think a lot of people fail to remember is that Sasquatch is a migratory species. They didn't originate in this part of the world, but came to it when it was now known as the Bering Strait was traversable. As their environment changed, you know, competition for resources and such, so did they. They had to, and they adapted by moving. One of the mistakes in the way us humans think is that we're very much relativists. We exist and think in the currency of time, as if what is now has always been. In the 21st century, we come to think of the Pacific Northwest as the ritual home of the Sasquatch. But that's not accurate. It's just the way we see it because it's our view of history. We sometimes forget we're looking through a very short spectrum of time. They didn't always live here. Their body hair isn't there to insulate them from the cold, but to maintain constant body temperature. It allows them to stay regulated without consuming energy that would be required to produce heat. To your skeptical listeners, I'd encourage them to recognize that evolutionary advantage instead of attempting to contradict your evidence with a poor understanding of science. Think about it. If you could do something to stay warm, you'd do it, right? Now, if you could stay just as warm without doing something, well, I don't know a person who wouldn't take that path of least resistance. We're a pretty lazy species ourselves. I imagine Sasquatch is the same. Plus, I know you're a native of Washington, so you'll understand, but your listeners may not. Just look around you. There's hardly another local environment on the continent that has such ecological variation as the Pacific Northwest. It's a great place to live, and if we enjoy it, why wouldn't Sasquatch? <laughs> well, now what about geography? There's plenty of open space all around the country that's temperate. What advantage does this area have over others that skeptics say are similar? The forests and waterways, mostly. The Pacific Northwest is a tapestry of green and blue. It's an easy land to live off, chock full of resources for any clever species to take advantage of. There is no need to migrate anywhere else. Over the course of thousands of years, populations in other regions of the continent would have had to evolve to adjust to the limitations of their surroundings or go extinct. Like us, the Sasquatch is fortunate enough to live here, where its needs are few. Plus, open space in Washington, Oregon, or British Columbia means something completely different than the open spaces of Nebraska or Kansas. No offense to any of your listeners in those places. If Sasquatch ever made it that far, they moved on or died out. An environment like that wouldn't be conducive to their survival for the same reason that history has never shown vast homeo sapien population centers in the middle of deserts. Well, not until technological advances allowed for that to happen. Would you say having plentiful resources is what keeps Sasquatch here? That and the fact that Sasquatch is not a stupid animal. Not at all. Few species get the credit they deserve for us humans, especially Sasquatch. Over the course of my studies, and even to this day, I'm amazed at how quick humans are to dismiss Sasquatch as an intelligent mammal. A cultural leftover. I'm sorry? I don't follow. Oh. 
nothing. I, I just mean that culturally, we're expected to see ourselves as a superior species. Humans seem to believe everything else, all of nature, is part of our dominion, to rule and use how we see fit. You know, when we view the rest of the world that way, it's not hard to see why we disregard the intelligence, hell, the sentience of other creatures. Hmm, you've got a point. Sort of one of my frustrations with people. <laughs> I know you've been at this a while. One of these days, their stubborn skepticism will jade you into feeling nothing. I promise. <laughs> you can relate, huh? Anyone in this field worth their weight should be able to. Our common area of interest isn't something we parade around, unfortunately. Not if we want to be respected. One of these days, we need to talk about some of the career problems you've faced because of your interest in Bigfoot. And make me relive my shame? How cruel. Mind you, I'm not a careerist, so I'm not interested in some manufactured position of power and influence, but it would be nice to have this aspect of who I am to be taken seriously by my peers, or at least have it not negatively impact me. Sadly, that's a rarity. What about you? No, same. But I figure I pretty much set myself up for that since this is my career. Well, I don't want to dwell on that. Let's change hearts and minds, shall we? At least that's what it sounds like you're attempting to do. Eh, you could say that. I consider this project to be my big final push. If I can't convince people of the existence of Sasquatch when I'm done with this, well, I worry my entire career will have been a waste. You must be pretty confident with what you're tracking to say something like that. Uh, I believe I've got very solid evidence, and I know I'll come across more as I narrow my focus. So, yeah, I'm confident. If I'm not, then what's the point? You found tracks, didn't you? Hmm. Even better. I explained to Peter what I'd found so far. To say he was excited would be an understatement. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I think he was as excited about what I've found as I am. And that's saying something. I believe I've found a trail of evidence that's going to finally satisfy everyone, believers and skeptics alike. Well, at least those who don't just flat out refuse to accept evidence they have an obvious bias against. Our food came and the discussion turned to more common topics while we enjoyed the meal. And then he asked about her. So, what's Maria think about this? She's got to be so happy for you, being this close to finding Bigfoot. We're separated. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't... No, 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 it's, it's fine. You couldn't have known. This, all of it, the investigation, time, the expense, the professional consequences, it's, it's been taxing, to say the least. I'm sorry, man. I'm on the road a lot. Most of my research is happening out in the Olympics now, but... Honestly, I'm still hopping all over the Pacific Northwest. I'm usually gone three to four nights a week. That would be bad enough if I had an acceptable job. But this? Yeah, Maria tried to be patient. She waited a long time. So, yep. I guess you could say she isn't a fan of what I've done with my life. I'm sorry, Jared. There's a heavy price associated with this pursuit, and I've had a lot of friends and colleagues over the years who've paid that price. It'd be nice to get a break. For all of us. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir. But I hope what I'm doing will do that. Maybe I'll save everyone else's marriage if I can't save mine. A noble aim. So, what's next? Headed out to Rainier. Really? What's out there? Oh, a park ranger called me this morning when I was on my way here. Supposedly there was a sighting last night. Not sure if he believed it or not, though. It was a strange conversation. In the National Park? Yeah. He sounded conflicted about it. I'm headed out there first thing in the morning. I want to hear what he saw, see the site before some visitor trips across it and disturbs it, and see if this was legit or not. I haven't had a sighting out near Rainier in a while. I'd love to know what you find. Oh, of course. I'll keep you posted. Let me ask you something. What's this all about for you? This investigation? 
Why still do it, especially now that I know what's going on with Maria? Someone has to. Someone has to find the answers. Either way. Either it's out there, or it's not. And we're never going to know without dogged investigation. So I can either tell people what needs to be done, or I can go do it myself. The latter seems less hypocritical. And, well, I've got other reasons. Got it. I don't want to pry. Well, I've probably taken enough of your time. Jared, be careful out there. Uh, I will I'm be. serious. The closer you get to finding answers, the more dangerous this is going to get for you. Don't forget that. Dangerous? Not sure I know what you mean. Sasquatch is a solitary creature for the most part. It doesn't want to be found. Tread carefully. I will, but I feel like you're not saying what you want to say. <laughs> it's probably just me. No, please, tell me. Listen, I've already lost almost everything worth having. Don't, just don't be naive about this. Sasquatch are fine when left alone, but they don't like being threatened, and there are plenty of people who don't want you to find them. Plenty of people. You won't be making friends. I was uneasy with the way Peter behaved toward the end of our lunch. The entire conversation took a strange, dark turn. He changed. But he didn't give me any more to go on. There was something there, underneath the layers of our conversation. It was frustrating not being able to put my finger on it, though. We gave each other our best wishes. Peter's were manufactured, practiced. He was tense, very tense. I'm not sure what I said that changed his mood, but by the end, he was as closed up as a bank safe. And I didn't want to risk our relationship by prying, so I left it. But something is bugging me about his sudden change. He wasn't telling me everything. I'm not sure why. People on his side of the issue, the professionals, I don't usually have a problem telling those of us on this side what they think about our investigations and pursuits. And Peter and I have always had an excellent working relationship. I, I consider him a friend. Maybe that's why his reluctance to be open is bothering me so much. It's something I've been thinking about while getting ready for my trip to Mount Rainier tomorrow morning. To end with a positive note, I'm very interested to see what this park ranger found. I want to start with Rainier because of its history of Bigfoot sightings, especially among experienced hikers. There are a lot of stories out there and a lot of consistencies in them, even if the number of reports has been down over the last few years. Another trend that has me convinced I'm on the right track. What I find out there may help me understand what I think I've found in the Olympic National Park, but more about that in my next recording. I've got a good feeling about this. All quotes that you hear at the beginning of each episode are provided by Steve Mojo Wilkins of the Washington Sasquatch Research Team. You can find more of Steve's work over at wasrt.net. And I would like to thank Steve for his time on educating me on what it's like to find Bigfoot. Subject Found is a Paul Sadian production in association with Fate Crafter Studios. This episode was written and edited by Paul Sadian and was produced by Brian Bristol. Join us in episode two as Jared launches his investigation into a Bigfoot sighting on Mount Rainier in the National Park an immensely impressive, dormant volcano that dominates the landscape of western Washington. If you have any sightings you would like to report, head over to the website at foundstories.com and use a contact link to get in touch with us and we'll make sure to get it into Jared's hands. You can also find more information about Subject Found on the website foundstories.com. John McLean is Jared Strong. You can find more of John's work at jmacvo.com. That's 
jmacvo.com and over at dogandponystudios.net. Michael Kennedy plays Peter Beckingham. You can find Michael's work at iamyourvoiceover.com. Music in this episode is licensed and provided by Chris Collins over at IndieMusicBox.com. If you're enjoying the show and would like to support it and other creations by me, head on over to Patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading, P-A-U-L-S-A-T-I-N-G. As a gesture of my appreciation to you for supporting this show, by becoming a patron over at Patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading, you are a patron of not only Subject Found, but Diary of a Madman. That's right. Two shows for the patronage of one. I would like to take a moment to thank Greg, PB, Sylvia, Monica, John, Elsa, Dohai, and Kevin, all for getting this show off to a wonderful launch as patrons absolutely wonderful to have the eight of you help kick the show off in style i'm excited about where this show is going and i'm excited by you and your excitement as a creator i cannot tell you how much that means to me if you're interested in checking out what's over there head on over one more time to patreon.com forward slash paul sating each and every gesture of support is truly appreciated lastly Go over to the site, not only to find out how you can subscribe to the show, but while you're at it, find out how you can get to those places to leave us a five-star rating and review. Those things go a long way in helping the show be found. Until next episode, remember, all that is lost must be found.